Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, planning open data office hours. We're going to be exploring the entire catalog of what uh, C planning offers on open data, um, where you can find them, um, as, as well as some other. I'm Matt Croswell. Um, I've been city planning for 15 years. Uh, I started out in uh, more of a GIS analyst role, um, now GIS team lead. Uh, we'll get into that. And I'm also the open data coordinator data coordinator since the program started nine years ago, almost 10. Well, like I said, we'll be, I'll start off with an introduction of our catalog, some of our resources. I emailed out to the group um, to submit questions ahead of time, and a couple of people did, so I really appreciate that. Uh, so I'll go over those pre-submitted questions, and then for the rest of the time, we can open it up to the floor if you have any specific questions on any of city planning data. So getting into our catalog, the city planning has been committed to making our data free to the public and to developers. We're on the forefront of this. We had an open data page before there was an open data law. And so once that open data law came to exist uh, in 2012, we expanded and we've been greatly expanding what we offer um, since then. There's also some software that we produce, mostly for geocoding. So that software, and data is downloadable. You can also access some of our data on uh, feature services, mark just online. But the main uh, portal to go to get this data is our own um, open data site called Bytes of the Big Apple. You can also uh, sign up for our RSS feed if you want to have alerts so we'll update that site. And then, of course, City Planning's open data is available on the open data um, portal along with the other thousands of data sets the other city agencies put out. Here is not the complete list, but many of the sort of heavy hitters of data sets that we put out when they are their update cycle. Uh, so we'll just start off in the monthly category. These are zoning features, uh, zoning districts, special districts, sidewalk cafe regulations, which might actually go away. Now they've passed legislation to keep the street, uh, street sheds um, open. So with that, there might not be sidewalk cafe regulations They've been suspended since the start. There's a city map, which is features on the official map of the city of New York. Um, these are the sh official street names, street widths, parks. You actually have to have go through the EUA process to amend the city uh, map. And so all that data is digitized as part of the digital system. Um, and then other zoning features like uh, mandatory inclusionary housing, e-designations, uh, lower density growth management area, and zoning tax lot database, which is a more up-to-date version of tax lots with the latest zoning data. In the quarterly section, we have our, probably what's considered our flagship. This is a tax lot based data set that has over 60 attributes on property, building, zoning, land use information with sources, including city planning, department of finance. And then we also release these next four are part of a interagency maintenance system. Citywide Street Center Line. The Department of City Planning maintains the Lion file, which is the Street Center Line, and has all the uh, address information on the Street Center. Line. There's also special addresses that are captured within these data sets. All of the political census, the demographic uh, boundaries, administrative boundaries, they're also maintained in the system and aligned to that Lion file. So if there's a change to the Lion Street Center Line, the boundaries for those districts will adjust to them. There's also these two directories, the property address directory, which um, captures the addresses on a lot-based system rather than the street center line. And the street name dictionary, which gives you all the variants um, that a single street could have. 7th Avenue, Fashion Avenue, it's got an honorary name for like a firefighter, all that's captured. Those um, four and additional data sets go into what we call geo support which is a desktop GeoSupport software. But we also have a desktop application for using GeoSupport as a um, Geo. I'm trying to just go through all these, the sort of less frequently or as needed data sets get updated. We have several for city facilities, uh, city-owned properties, the facilities database. Uh, we'll get into some of these more specifically later. All the NYC census demographic tables, the specific waterfront data sets. Some very valuable for analyzing climate change, uh, sea level rise, flood future. And then all of the data that gets posted to our uh, Bytes of the Big Apple portal, all of them are archived. So if you ever want to go back in time to around 2002, I think is as far back as we go, 
you can pull a single archive data set. So if you want the zoning from 2008 in June, that'll be there for all of them. Here I wanted to get into some of these different resources that we make available. I'll leave that up there if people want to take a picture. So the first one is just the Bites of the Big Apple website. And this is on our city planning's website. If you look up here, there's tabs. You go to the data and tools tab and you have uh, two sections, one for open data the one for maps and geography. So within the open data section, this is where all the data sets are available. You'll see on the left, there are all the different categories of data that you can access. And then something like, let's say for Pluto, all of our data sets will have metadata uh, attached to them. But for some of the bigger data sets, we also maintain a data dictionary and a readme file. And these are very useful. Uh, if you're struggling to figure out what's a value, a domain value, or what does this field in Pluto mean? Pop these open and they'll have a wealth of information for you. For instance, if you wanted to know land use, they'll bring you down here to the land use field and you can see all the different value descriptions. So ones for one, two family, et cetera. Then we have the tools page, which was actually the other side of that page. So open data, and then we have this maps and geography. I'm planning on working with our web team to uh, improve this. Right now, it's a mix of our applications and maps. I want this to be more comprehensive than include all of city planning's applications. So you can see on the left again, which the, some of the applications might be familiar with Zola or Population Fact Finder. This is where you can go to get that. The, the NYC Planning Digital is a blog um, that we have at city planning. And this also gives you a lot of good in-depth information to do like deep dives or one-offs with our data. You can see this one, our latest one. We've taken a little bit of break during the pandemic. This is from 2020. But this is what's how you, what's in a name. And that dives into sort of the naming uh, structure of for city street names. But we also sometimes blog when we have a data release or for instance, the zoning resolution online was released. So I would check in here to get more. The next one is the NYC Planning Lab site. Planning Labs was a division within city planning that created most of the applications today. It's since evolved from what they started as a small unit. The original founders of there are no longer at city planning, but there's still a visual service team now that's maintaining and expanding on the applications that we make available. But you might want to check in on this. Even though it's not going to be updated anymore, there's still a lot of information on that planning web's site. And right now it might be actually more comprehensive for a listing of most of our applications. And then, you can go to this website if you're looking for other city planning um, applications that are hosted in our ArcGIS online portal. So there's a combination of applications and story maps, information on how the 2020 census was reconfigured and our new files involving that, a flood hazard mapper to find out what your flood zone is in New York. And then, as I said before, all of our data is on the NYC Open Data Portal. And if you ever have any questions about any of our data sets, you can email us at abc.planning.mic.gov. So are there any questions about what we just talked about? If not, it doesn't look like there is. We'll get into the submitted questions. And the first submitted question was from Jamie Hano. Are you here? Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you for submitting a question. Very appreciated. I'll just go through the question so that you can hear it for the recording. I'd like to learn more about the new 2020 census tract, CBTA, and NTA boundaries and best practices when it comes to doing uh, historical comparisons this with census. And the second question was, I'd like to learn more about more efficient means of geocoding. Examples of how it can be cumbersome, which I definitely understand. And then also you're making a point that sometimes you have to geocode a very large uh, amount of data with uh, sometimes 5 million records or so. Is there anything you want to add to that before we get in? What I call city-specific districting, which is community districts and neighborhoods, uh, right. NTAs. Okay. And that you can get from GeoSupport. It's just cumbersome and the amount of data that you need to process. You're looking to see what's the best way, best practices for that, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I did check in with our population division. So for the first question about the comparing census data from different years, and also what those new sort of boundaries mean. The first recommendation is to check out these two resources for better understanding the geographies. So one we just saw, but I'm going to bring it back up. So there's one that's a story map, and there's this other one that's more of just a web page. I actually believe this is a story map as well. 
So this has all of the information on the 2020 census reconfiguration. And I'll just go through a little bit of it here so you can see the overview. But I definitely recommend to dive into this afterwards so you can get all the specifics. But it breaks down each of the different categories. And you can see that the CDTA, which is uh, Community District Tabulation Area, and the NTA, which is Neighbor Tabulation Area, these are New York City specific. City planning created these statistical geographies. They're not census, US census uh, products. The biggest thing is, and the reason we created them, was that they are basically nesting blocks. So all the NTAs are made up out of census tracts, and then all the CDTAs are made up out of the NTAs. So you can go from one to the other um, without having boundaries across each other and have a sort of one-to-one -one comparison. So you could definitely explore this site to, to know some more of that information. And the second part of this was the biggest recommendation they had was do not make comparisons over time using different vintages of the geographies. So if you have 2020 census tracts and, and 2010 census tracts, you don't, uh, spatial files of them, you don't want to compare those two since they're not in sync. You want to convert that older one to the latest one so that you're doing a one-to-one. -one. So if you had a census, if you had a census tract, we'll get into the third bullet in a second, but just on that point. So if you had in, whether you gain or lose population, the tracks are going to either split or merge. So in 2010, if you have a uh, census tract A and B, and then in 2020, you lose population, that might just become all A now. And so you want to make sure you're actually comparing the full A to A and B. But if you're doing the comparisons for the two late, the two most recent censuses or the two most recent ACSs, which is American Community Survey data, we have a application that sort of, that sort of does that for you. And so I just want to bring that up, especially if people have not seen this yet. What you're showing? Oh, yeah. Ah, really? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought that was. It's, I feel like it's trapped just viewing the PowerPoint or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> Which I. So you have to decide with. I've had this problem before. I'm so sorry. I thought I told them I was going to be going back and forth. So I thought that was on there. I don't know if there's any technical way that we can. Let me ask. Her. Okay. Um, really sorry about that. I apologize. So since you can't see my, um, screen when I'm going to the internet, let's just go back through the slides and when hopefully we get somebody to come in to help us out with that so that we can, I can demo some of these applications for you. So in that fact finder application that didn't pop up and should have popped up, it allows you to select whichever geography type you want, NTA, CDTA, and you can customize those selections. So you can pick as many of them as you want. It allows you to do radius selections, you can type in an address and pinpoint that address and then do a radius off of that. You can bring in your own layers so you can select the census tracts that are within a custom study area. And then you can view all that data within the app. It will compare it between the, the two latest. Um, it doesn't do anything past 2010 for census, which we're hoping to enhance in the future. And it doesn't do anything but the, the, most, the two most recent ACSs but you can also compare them to other geographies. So if you have your selection area, you can compare them to a specific borough, citywide, and they'll show you the differences. So you can pick those up. And then it also allows you to download that data as your custom selection. The second question, again, a little bit uh, harder to explain without showing you the demos, are the actual sites. So first off, GeoSupport is our geocoder and it's the most accurate geocoder for New York City, since New York City has such unique addresses and street names. And we have special files to handle that. There's addresses that are out of range. There are street names in two different sections of the city. So yes, we want to be able to show it on the screen. The different type of coders we have available. The first one is Go. This would be for someone who it doesn't have as much technical training or, or maybe access to certain software. So this is just an online uh, web application. It's only good for looking up single addresses at a time. And like I said, it's more for a low, low tech version of it, but it can return. You can enter addresses, block street stretches, intersections, and get a bunch of different district and other city information returned to you. The second one that was listed 
is the GBAT Geo Support Desktop. This is a downloadable um, software. I think most people are familiar with this one. It's more of a flagship geocoder, uh, but it is very cumbersome to use. It's a very, very long manual to read through to get exactly what you want. But those two, those work also have it going for small batch jobs, more like the thousands, tens of thousands. But like you pointed out, it is cumbersome to use. And there's GeoClient API, which do it puts out. So it's not a safe client product. But they do use the geo support data inside that. So just talking about geo client now. So this is a do it product. It used that uses geo support, but they are responsible for swiping in the newest geo support. So it can be behind. I would check any wiki or metadata documents that they have with that to see which the, what is the version of just what they're using. And then the biggest limitation is that there's a max of 2,500 requests a minute and only 500,000 per day. So your 5 million would take 10 days. So what we are suggesting, and we had a data engineer develop a system that has geo support tied to Python. There's a Python binding for our geo support system. And there's the GitHub here that you can go to to download everything and, and read up on. But then he also created a blog on that same blog that you should have saw before. So here's an entire walkthrough on how to set it up and then how to run the system. So I'm not gonna get into the specifics here, but I believe the, the whole presentation will be available to you. If it's not, you can email me through, through School of Data or through that DCP Open Data email link, and I'll be able to send all the entire presentations you have access to all these links. So that would be what our recommendation is. It's more efficient than just using GeoSupport on its own. It uses the power of Python. Jesse Lang. Right here. The person had some good questions, so I'm just going to run through them. It was, the questions are about, we'll go through them one by one. So the first one was, what open data is useful for engaging with you? ULIP is the land use review procedure, the city planning overseas, so this is changing zoning um, and other sort of authorization, certification, special permits, uh, applications that come through city planning. So if you have, if you are, have, you have the technical training, data analysis, GIS analysis uh, training and access to the software. We make a lot of open data available that are very helpful for engaging in this procedure. First one would be the NYC census data. So if you're looking, if there may be a rezoning is coming up. You can already you can analyze the demographics, social, economic, housing characteristics, see what the existing conditions are and what they're proposing to change. ECB housing database is one of our newest data sets. This contains all DOB approved housing construction and demolition jobs since 2010 and gives you uh, way to the DOB data can be very um, confusing. So they do a lot of the data cleaning for you within this uh, database. Um, facilities database is the 30,000 facilities that are licensed by one of the government agencies in New York City. So some of the ULIP processes are about citing facilities. You can use that. And of course, the zoning features and the digital city map data. Coming soon will be something called ZAP search open data. We're expecting to release this in either the next quarter or quarter three, and we'll get into exactly what that is in this next one. So if you're using, if you don't have access to the software or if you're don't lack of training and data analysis, we make a ton of tools available to help you explore and analyze the data. So Zap Search is an existing um, portal that we have right now, and the data behind it is tied up because it's a brand new system that's been on for works for a couple of years now. And what it is a public portal that allows you to explore project and application data um, from the filing. So when they file the application all the way through the public review process. That's 30,000 plus projects going back to the 70s and data related to project specifics, applications, applicants who file the application, um, project milestones, where it is in the process, and project geography and more. So I just want to show you what that one looks like. And this data is what we're going to be making available. It'll be phased out. So the first phase will be a table of the projects with the, its locations in a BBL table. And eventually we're going to make it a spatial data set with a lot more of the attributes. So here you have a project status. This can be tricky if you don't know. You might want to click on all of them, but it also, if you load too many options, um, it can jam up the search. So we'll do one. See how this live one goes. Sometimes you get this message down here, but it's, it also could be if it's a different um, status. So I'm just going to click and show you 
let's say we were searching for 65 Spring Street, you then would get to this project page. They could see all of the data um, that's available to you. Who is the applicant? What is this project? Public documents, the status of the project, seeker information and community, and then the milestones. So where was it in the process? This will happen to be complete. And what actions were filed? Um, so if you're actually going to the public community board hearing or any type of public hearing related to ULERP, you can actually check its status in this application and we will be making this data available shortly. Population fact finder. So I didn't get to show you this before. So I just want to give you a quick demo. Here is you have all of your census geographies at the top. So you can select which geography you want. Let's just do NTA or at Roosevelt Island. You can click and just add as many as you want to here, or you can if you click wrong, select it back. Here's your address lo locator. So if we were uh, wanting a specific address, you can go into and find that there. And then, like I said, if you want to do, there's other selection methods up here. One is the radius, and, but you can't play around with it, but <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not working. Oh, he's in your live demo. So this one's the polygon version. So you can see, get back to it. It selects all of the ones that were in your, and the radius does do that as well. This is where you can add map layers. So there's return on features, subway, community districts, but down here, you can actually dra drag and drop a, uh, your custom um, shape file. And then you could use that to click around and, and select your geography. So now that we have the seven MTA selected, this is where we go to the view data and you have these tables that will come up and you can see here's our selected area. So it's population, age, race and ethnicity, housing. There's, it's limited right now to these selections. You can turn them on and off. A uh, future enhancement will expand more. Here's what your data source is at the moment. You can change that from 2020 to 2010 or the change, or you can use ACS as I was saying. And then in this middle column, you have the, what it's being compared to. So here's your selection. Here's what it looks like to the whole city. You can change that comparison to a specific geography and then the difference between those two. And then once you have all this selected over here, you see there's four, and you can download these tables to use later and the geographies as well. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Can you upload your own shape files? Does it save it at all? Or to, would you need to do that every time? You um, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure. I think. Yeah. It's uh, browser specific. So okay. are you still using the same browser? I think it's still in there. Yeah. I totally like, once you, yeah, yeah. Change, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. change it out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. But I'll, I can follow up on that if you want to send me an email. Capital Planning Explorer. Did anyone just go to that? He did. If anyone didn't, I'll do it quick. Just look at what it is. So this is another data application explorer that has three components, the housing database or housing, capital projects and plans, facilities, program sites, and, and in housing developments. I'm just going to go into the capital planning part right now. And so this is another data set that currently is not open to the public. I believe you can download it from here, but that's the only current location. This comes from the actual capital plans from the city agencies, and it's an effort for city planning to then work with those agencies to actually digitize that data. That's why it hasn't been open in the past. So we're, we're starting to have a process now where we can do that more efficiently. And so now that we have the data digitized here, we will be making that available to the public. And then you have filters over here where you can adjust for agency types of projects or plans, uh, capital projects, the money involved. And you can, you can sit, like the other one, you can download that data as well. I recommend to go back and watch for more details on this to go back and watch the recording of that session. Community profiles, it's basically, I will, I will dive into it, but it's basically another data explorer app that gives you all information within a community district. So that's great for engaging um, with the user process. And then you have Zola and NY Streets. Well, Zola is for all the zoning information and Streets is for the city. Third question was, title should be different, but could you also share a little bit about what the GS team does? And that's a great question for, for me. Like, thank you for asking. So the GS team is a one of three units within the enterprise data management section of the information technology division at city planning. We see responsible for managing the agency's extensive GRF data warehouse uh, for our internal users, publish agency data to open data, manage GS infrastructure and provide technical assistance, and we collaborate uh, with other divisions on various GS analysis. And sometimes you also create tools, scripts, and web applications to automate the GS process. 
we actually currently have an opening for a GS specialist at city planning. So if anybody's aware or interested, please go to NYC jobs, nyc.gov slash jobs or city planning's website. So I'd like to open it up to the floor. If there's any questions? Yes. What are some key challenges you face as an open data coordinator? And how do you work with other coordinators and agencies across the city? There's some limitations uh, on what the open data can provide to each agency and also depending on the skills that each agency, what they can also do. So our biggest um, issue right now is we don't have any type of pipeline where we can just automate the data and have it go straight to. So what we do is we actually publish it to our own website and then open data scrapes it from there. And so it'd be a much more efficient system that we can just drop some type of data storage in the space and that they can just pick it up and it's also available for our website. Also it's available to any other one, anybody else who wants to download it directly to that site. It's also the city itself has that problem of sharing data across agencies. There's a lot of firewall issues with us being allowed to put data in the cloud environments. Um, and so all of that is a burden on us where there's a lot of duplication, moving data around and being able to just be more efficient. Was there another problem? I'm just wondering how you work with other agencies. Um, work right together. There's even a part of open data. It's basically where the public submits questions. And so the open data team filters them to which agency it should go to. And sometimes they'll tag two of us or three of us, and we'll all communicate that way. If I have a data issue, I usually will go to that list of the open data coordinators and, and ask them. Um, so I find that it's a good way to, to coordinate with other agencies if I don't have a, a contact or email with that agency. So there's not like an internal school of data for the coordinators? They do have some check-ins. During the pandemic, it's been less, but I imagine that once we're reopening, we'll turn to that. And they do put out some programs. I think one of the talks I heard about the experience. So they'll have sessions where they bring in like some of the ODCs to help contribute the you know, strategy for the dictionary should be, what the standards should be, what's the, what can happen with the data approved. So they do engage with us. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a very first question. Yeah. Yeah. What's the first note? If you or do you know anyone within the department familiar with providing the statistics from the U.S. Census Bureau? Yeah. So. Is there a... Yep. So we did um, look at that, and I'll just bring it back up. So one of our applications is the population fact finder, and so in here. You can uh, select any, any geography you, you want, any census geography that we have available, see census track, NTA, CDTA, other geographies over here. You can search by address and then within here, you can custom select whichever geography you want. You can view the data here. That data is then compared to a different geography. I don't want to repeat everything for everyone that's here, but I, like I said, I, you can, I'll share this. You go to our website. And you should be able to find it on um, the data tools tab uh, and the map and geography section or the population um, section as well. Specifically about this, I was yeah. curious to know how complex you found it to be to query it from the Census Bureau. Yeah. So, so I'm not directly getting the data from there. There is a division in our in city planning that does. So I'm not exactly sure how difficult they were having about pulling it down from there. But I would say if you're looking to use New York City data, just go to here or go to our data that's available. So you don't have to even worry about pulling it from. I believe there are. If you go to each one of their websites, you'll be able to find um, certain ones. I think Parks has a few. He does have something where you can find all this like street furniture and some of their assets. Um, buildings doesn't really have much, but there's a lot of data coming out of DOP. But yeah, we were fortunate to have some administration that really saw the need for the tech side invested in hiring civil technicians to come in, technologists to come in and create a lot of these applications. And so now that we open that door, see the floodgates opening it, we're going more that route, which I really appreciate. Yeah. But I think we did miss some of the 
demo. So this was the open data portal, categories of all of our data here on the left. So you can specific, actually, I'm on the tool section. So that's the open data portal on our website where you can find all of our data. You can sign up for our feed for the updates. Census, all of our census data is here. You can download them in the download pages. There's specific more descriptions about what the geographies are, like NTA. You can download the data directly. You can um, consume the REST or GeoJSON. Like I said, we have make met metadata available for all of our data sets, something like Pluto. This is what I was showing you before. We have data dictionary readme for. So the data dictionary is probably over 100 pages and it gives you great detail of every single field that's in here. Where you can, if you need to know more information about a specific field, it will give you that description. You have your land use category, gives you formatting, the source, and then the actual descriptions and, and your domain values. Um, down here, going back to that, this is the Maps and Geography tab on the same data tools tab. This is where you have most of our applications that are available. So you can get Population Fact Finder here, the Metro Regional Explorer, which has entire region, so some Jersey, Connecticut, upstate. Our street map dives into the uh, official street city map data. GOAT is that geocoder, single entry. Zola, Facilities Explorer, which was tied to the um, Capital Planning Explorer. Finding your zoning, the hazard mapper. So all that information is here. This was the blog site that we didn't get to see before. So MIC did Planning Digital. There's Topics up here. So if you go into engineering, you'll see different projects, um, hirings. But this also has the full support Python blog that we were talking about before. And there's two other ones, Geo support with the API, and Geo support in Excel. But I have to uh, be honest, I'm not sure if the GI Geo client in Excel is working. Again, Geo clients do its product. So it's not, uh, it uses Geo support, but it's not or maintained. And this was our. ArcGIS online um, mapping portal. These contain story maps and all of our applications that are uh, created in Estrus ArcGIS online. This was the census geography that we didn't get to cover before. There are some new data sets that are coming out. So I did mention that we have a capital planning database coming out that's tied to every, all the data in the capital planning explorer. We also are making available that ZAP search open data soon. Um, that should be out hopefully by the summer or in the summer. Yes. What is that? I know there's already a zap out oh, already. So we need a difference, but it's no one. So right now we have the application available. Okay. Search. So you can search that information. Right. But what we're going to do is actually make the data available. So if you want to use the data yourself and analyze the data, how many uh, projects are uh, zoning map changes? How many projects are in this? Yeah. What type of changes are there? Yeah. Sure. I was having an issue with Zap where I couldn't bring it into like how we yeah. are. Oh. Oh, so now I can take yeah. Yeah. yeah, that actually solves an issue I had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it will be a sort of an enhancement, like an enhancement. The first release will be mostly just project data and uh, project BBLs as opposed to the location. Right. So it's on. And then as we uh, build out the process, we're going to hopefully be able to get the entire system out, all the data out, like all the milestones. There'll be some milestones. The system that's in right now is a Microsoft CRM, and there's been a lot of enhancements and changes, and so it's, it's very unstable. So that's what's release. So once that gets a little more stable and we have more finalized uh, where that data is going to be, what format it's going to be in, we're going to be start releasing more of that and also spatial files. Well, that sounds like all the data to my reports. Yeah. And then eventually the goal is to have open data be able to connect right to that CRM platform and so they can pull it daily. So something changes on the project and there's new last see it. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay. So that's gonna help you Yeah, thank you all for joining. Um,